As we discussed, we're going to do our recovery sequence today because my shoulders are still really hurting from the calisthenics. Grab yourself your tea. This is going to be really unrushed. I think it's really nice to give ourselves the time to, to say we've put this time apart and you always want to put one hour to be one hour if it's going to be like a chilled out recovery kind of sequence. More than one hour if you want to do some intense work. Mm, this tea is really good. You know, I found out they've stopped producing these cups. There's this company called Big Tomato Company. And they had the funniest cups with all these labels. I had one called Goddess, which I broke. And I have only this one left called Princess. And I love these mugs. They're just like... Honestly, it's not because of what it says. It's just... It's the finest porcelain. They're just the perfect thickness. You know, when you find a mug that's just like perfect. This is perfect. I can't believe they don't make it anymore. I can't even find it on eBay. So as I said in my intro video, we're going to be using our roller primarily. I want to mob. By the way, I'm freezing because I just had a frozen cold shower. I did a full four and a half minutes. The weather is so cold that the water has gotten really cold. So cold water currently, I mean, the good thing is that it makes you so numb that by the 20th breath, you don't feel anything. And it does, it makes you feel amazing afterwards, but you can feel your blood is still kind of cold going through your body. It's a really interesting sensation, the cold therapy, because you expose yourself to this freezing water. And then after you get out, the cold is inside of you because it, it, has, it has been absorbed kind of by your, at least the superficial vessels, right? Obviously not your organs, because that's the whole point, that the body's protecting your inner organs. Right, so, <clears throat> let's begin. Pull your hair up. So if you see that I'm shaking, I'm freezing a bit, that's why. And also, I can't turn on my heating because I don't know how to use my thermostat in this new apartment. I honestly think it's run out of battery at this point. Maybe that was the problem all along because it didn't work that well and now it doesn't even turn on. So grab your roller. I'll take this on off eventually, but for now I'm going to have this little cashmere thing on. Grab your roller, put it on your back. First thing we're going to do, you might hear me cracking now that I have this good microphone. Clasp the hands behind your head and just roll on the roller <sighs> while breathing very deeply. Just roll slowly up and down. Stretch your arms behind you, straight behind you. Roll all the way up to over your shoulders. So the part of the, your vertebra that's almost the neck. Hands behind the head. And instead of clasping them, take the elbows even more towards the front of the room. So really lengthen those underarms. So it's as if 
you straighten the arms towards the back of the room as much as you can and then you bend the elbows from there. So then you press the head against the hands and the hands are kind of crossed one on top of each other. And you're really, really opening that front of the shoulder. And now sway slightly to one side and the other just to get a little bit to the side. <sighs> Continue breathing. And I stay in these places until they don't have any more interest for me. So um, I stay while I'm feeling things. Oh my God, I'm really feeling <laughs> my lungs. Can't speak when you're squishing your lungs. So now actually come into a position of like a tricep stretch. So you grab your right elbow with your left hand and keep opening your chest opening your chest but the ribs are slightly in so let's be aware of not over extending our back and now the other arm so you grab the left elbow with the right hand Really, really great stretch. And now come on one side. This is one of the things where the roller really excels because you just can't do this with anything else. Let me protect my cup from kicking. Okay, so you're lying on the lift. You have your roller right, oh my God, right where your calisthenics hit you. It's just right underneath, on the armpit, going towards the back. I could feel that I wanted to clack. All right, so the roller is on the armpit, and if you have any tension right away, you're going to die. So you're going to really feel that you're in the right place. Clasp the hands kind of behind the back, just, just to get in there. And now straighten the top leg. And I really like to involve the whole body when I do this. So I'm just having my roller underneath that underarm. So I'm leaning on it on my side. And then I start twisting, taking the right arm in front of me and away and diagonally the right leg back. And then I open that right arm to the side and I bring that right leg forward. And I do this, just forward and back. Right leg forward and you will feel such a great stretch everywhere. So when we take the right leg forward, we're mobilizing that right hip. We're lengthening that hamstring. So many things are happening. And you're twisting the back, the muscles on the back. So you're doing a twist. You're lengthening the hamstring. You're mobilizing, warming up the hip. This is my favorite kind of twist. And at the same time, obviously you're targeting that back and underarm because you're leaning on it. Very, very effective, this move. You can bend the elbow if you want. Keep breathing. And go to the other side. So turn around, lean on your right side, place the roller just underneath that where the underarm meets the back. And this, this hurts like hell. So I guess 
This is what you use, right, when you're doing pull-ups. So take your time. If this hurts, just stay there. You want to stay about 60 seconds in one area. If that area is sore. And the great thing of doing this, it, it makes you realize that soreness, it really can go away. And it doesn't mean that you've hurt anything. Because when I massage this, like my, the arm that we have been working on, it doesn't hurt anymore. All right, start extending the left arm forward and diagonally and the left leg back and open. Take that left leg forward, left arm back and change. Right leg forward, left arm forward, left arm back. And when you go forward, really, really, really reach. And now the knee and the leg extend to the other side and back. So you're diagonally kind of swimming or I don't know how to describe this. Down, stretch, and now left leg stretches and you twist to the left. As you straighten the left arm and the left leg, you feel the buttocks engaging hard. Flex that foot, feel the hamstring, feel the buttocks engaging, engage the buttocks. Feel the muscles on your back extending that left arm. You really feel everything. And now bend the left leg, take that leg forward. Feel that leg really active. Feel the left arm really active. You're opening the chest here, you're twisting. And then back. So the slowest you go, the more you can bring awareness to everything in the body and the more intense the exercise is going to be. So let's do a really, really slow one. So let's stop on the twist. So take that left leg forward, extend it as much as you can and take the left arm to the left side, opening the chest. So opening the chest, you're feeling a really good opening on the front of the shoulders. You're feeling a really good opening and stretch on the front of the arm, which is actually kind of hard to target. You're flexing that hand, so you're feeling also a stretch in your wrist. On the leg, you're feeling a stretch all on the back of the leg and on the hip, you're kind of opening that hip, you're stabilizing with your core, so your core is active, the whole of your body is active here, and you're flexing that foot so your hamstring is extending, and your quads are working hard, so come back, so extend the left arm forward, left leg back, buttocks is engaged, back muscles are engaged because the arm is pulling forward, Fingertips are trying to reach forward, forward, forward. Do you see just how much work there is in a pose that in principle is just like you're moving on top of a roller? And actually, this is a strengthening exercise all in itself. <sighs> and breathe. So you should feel already completely different to how you started. Now... Let's do something really interesting. So front of the shoulder. This is quite a particular place to target, but I want us to do it. Let me just grab my mic and bring it to the other side. So take the roller and put it right at the front of your shoulder where your chest meets your shoulder. 
this is an area that we don't usually so you're literally leaning on top of it and we're trying to make space in that area right between the top of your chest where the clavicle meets the shoulder this is a really great area to try to lengthen lengthening the muscles of the chest because all of these muscles the muscles of the chest and the muscles of the top of the shoulder the trapezius it's what drags your face down and what drags your head forward so when all of these muscles are short first of all you will get jowls and your face will drag down and you will also get a hump at the back of your neck because these muscles are short the front ones and so they're pulling everything forward so you want to lengthen and by addressing this by making space in the front of the body here we're trying to put everything back to its original position obviously there's a lot of other factors coming into play but this is one of them all right and let's go to the other side I'm studying all of these things in a really interesting course that I'm doing about facial fascia. I've done a lot about body fascia, but now facial fascia is just a completely different universe. So we're putting the roller in front of your right shoulder and trying to find that space. It's a bit tricky. And just rolling on top of it. While pushing the floor with the other arm. So again, you're stabilizing. Maybe you want to twist to the other side and then you're doing a twist at the same time. And really, you're rolling on the chest muscles. Obviously, be careful if you have boobs. Don't roll on top of the boob. Just stay on the side. You will feel the chest muscles. You, they, oh, they're really tight. They're really tight. See, all of these really tight muscles are making our, the front of our body so concave and just doesn't allow the chest to expand. <sighs> so you want to relax them. You want to relax everything so that then when you work it, it can be placed in the right position. And it can grow properly. Because if you try to strengthen without actually doing this work of lengthening first, everything is just going to be small and tight. Okay, perfect. So sit up. Check again now how your back feels after doing all of that. So roll on the back. Wow, completely different experience, huh? And now let's go to the trapezius. That's the last thing that I want us to work on. So this is another really painful one. You're lying as if you're lying on a pillow and you're sleeping on your side. So you're lying on this roller as if it was a pillow. With your hand, the opposite hand, try to lengthen the neck over that roller. So you want the neck to be as long as possible over the roller as if it was plasticine, just like place it, lengthen it over that roller and then start pushing towards the roller and you can stay here or you can raise your hips a little bit so that you're pushing towards the roller more. And, uh, and you can even hold your head up a little bit. You will see, you will feel when the roller is targeting muscles that are very tight and painful. So they're on the side of the neck and the top of the shoulder. Side of the neck and where the neck meets the top of the shoulder. That's where we want to press with the roller. Ah. 
and just roll in and out extremely slowly. If you lean slightly towards the front, you will target slightly different fibers. And here, just to draw your attention on things that are happening, if you are pressing the floor with the feet, then you are also working your buttocks here. Make sure you breathe and you will feel that the fibers are slowly melting like butter on that roller. Lean slightly towards the back. And then slightly forward. You might have to reposition that neck because it keeps going shorter. Lengthen it over the roller. Oh my God, this hurts so bad. The neck is usually very tight. We all have a tight neck. I'm already crying. But it will be so worth it, trust me. And also, if you're lifting your hips like I am, you're working the buttocks. your head on the roller and let's come to the other side so you should feel such a massive difference just so much space being created space that we are going to fill in with really beautiful things so lie on your side on the roller from the clavicle Stretch everything over that roller. You will feel right away that it hurts very bad. Push the floor, start pushing the floor with your hips, trying to drag yourself forward over that roller. You might not even have to raise your legs, like this side for me is a killer. And just, the body needs time, right? You can't push it. These tendons, I'm lifting and holding my head with my left arm. So the pressure is not even that much. But these tendons need time to soften. And now, finally, if the body allows you to, place the head on the roller. You're also, by holding the head like this, with the opposite hand, you're also getting a really nice stretch on the back of your arm. You might start to feel a headache. Okay. I'm on the roller now. My neck is as extended as I could get it. Now I'm going to start lifting my hips to target my trapezius top of the shoulder. That also hurts really bad, like there's such a pressure in my head when I push this muscle. Relax your shoulder completely. Allow it to move back and down. With the feet, push against the floor so you're dragging yourself forward towards that roller. 
So you're pressing strongly towards the trapezius, the top of the shoulder, where the shoulder meets the neck. And now the tendons are starting to move away, so they're starting to melt. And now you can lean forward and back. Remember to breathe. Every time you feel that sigh, it means that something has been unlocked. Those deep sighs are the key. So I'm leaning, you won't see barely any movement from the outside, but I am leaning forward and backwards. Feeling all these different tendons that are holding my head. And now there was a huge movement. I could feel one of these big tendons literally moving out of the way. So the more that you stay in this position things will happen. And of course, it's not that we want to make them soft. We can't. We need these tendons to be tense because they are holding us. But we want them to be long and we want to be able to manipulate their position to correct our posture. So we want them to be soft enough that they allow us to position them in the right place and then strengthen them and lock them there. Although always with a degree of flexibility, obviously. All right, so now when I roll forward and backwards on the roller, I can feel all of the tendons moving in and out of the way. So there's mobility now. That's exactly what we wanted. Oh my God, it feels amazing. I've cried. <laughs> like I have tears in my eyes because it was so painful. But it was amazing. And now... Very carefully with your hand, leave the head on the floor. And if you have a lacrosse ball, you don't really need to do it, but I'm just gonna test it. I'm gonna put the lacrosse ball on the back of my neck to see if there are any trigger points where the skull meets the neck. And no, actually we have targeted all of them with the roller. This is incredible because this is usually extremely painful, but nothing hurts. So no need to use the lacrosse ball right now. To get up, come to one side, lean to one side, hold the back of the head with your arm, and very slowly... Should feel... Amazing. Give yourself a moment to assimilate what you've just experienced. <laughs> wow. Now we're going to do legs. Grab the roller and let's start with the buttocks. So put it just, sit on it, put it just behind your bum, bum towards the back. So not underneath you, but on one side of you. 
and lean. So I'm starting on my left buttocks. I'm leaning towards the left. And I'm rolling this roller slowly up and down from the sit bone. So as soon as I feel the sit bone, I roll up. Sit bone to the hip, basically. The hip dip, slowly on the hip dip. And we're doing work on our triceps here because we're leaning, we're pushing the floor with that left arm. Leaning to the left. You can also be on your elbow. So you're really kind of collapsing, trying to put all of your weight on that roller. At the same time with your right arm, stretch up. So you will also feel a really great stretch on all of your right forearm, arm. And find the angles that are interesting to you. Find your trigger points here. For example, if I lean a little bit forward between that front of the hip and that front of the left leg, there's there's a point there. That's interesting. The body is all such a net of intertangled cables that are the tendons. It's just endless how much you can find in any one spot. <sighs> Remember, we're a universe within a universe. So I'm just really trying to get into that one spot that's really tight. Which is kind of just underneath that hip bone. It's literally stuck to the hip bone. There's a lot of fibrosis stuck to the bones as well. So if you go near the bones, you can feel things. Remember to breathe. And this spot is such a great one to release your hip flexor as well. All of the front of the quad that gets really tight and doesn't let you extend your leg. This is the spot. All right, so let's come back to more the big gluteus maximus area. So from the hip bone to the hip, hip bone, sitting bone, and keep rolling and now we are on the sitting bone. So sitting bone, explore the sitting bone above it and below it. So below it is where the hamstrings get attached. This is a really weird feeling point. Very weird if you're not used to it. If you're used to it, then it's already kind of relaxed, it's fine. But it really often feels like wrong, like you shouldn't be touching that point. But you need to be touching that point because that's what's going to give you give to the back of the legs. This is the key. If you want to be able to touch your toes, this area needs to be super supple. All of the hamstring attachment area and towards the groin. So lean towards the groin. These are such big muscles, such powerful muscles. There's a lot to unpack here. So we're just being soft, just leaning in, just telling our body, look, 
I'm not gonna do a rushed exercise routine right now. I'm just gonna let you tell me what you need and make you feel good. And then I promise you the body will give it all back to you. It will start looking amazing. So we're spending as much time as we need in this location. Sitting bone, hamstring. Learn to love your hamstrings. I know they're a complicated part of us, but they have a lot to give if you just invest the time. And there's no shortcuts. That's the only thing. You have to take this as your self-care, relaxation. Try to make it as beautiful as possible. Put on music, put on candles. Have a lover playing the piano. And now we've fallen on our bum. And don't disengage completely. So go back to the sitting bone and slowly drag the roller so you don't miss anything. So I'm on the back of my hamstrings and I don't want to miss any of these points. I want to do it slowly, slowly drag. And now because of the position of our arms, guess what? We're working our back and our triceps while we're doing this. So, so drag yourself on top of this roller. If you don't have a roller yet, I bet you're gonna get one after this experience. This voyeuristic experience of me on the roller. So roll. Maybe you can bring the shoulders up while you're doing this and make circles with your head and relax. Further relax your neck. And as you're rolling, take the time to open and stretch the front of the shoulders. So for a moment, bring your attention to the two hands that are pushing the floor. You're pushing the floor. You're dragging your body forward and then dragging it backwards. You're doing a hard work. And your core, your abdominals, are stabilizing here. So they are also engaging, contracting as you drag yourself forward and backwards, aren't they? And as you drag yourself forward and backwards, you will feel how actually the muscles on the back of your leg are starting to kind of open like a curtain away from each other. And suddenly you can access deeper planes. And as you access deeper planes, keep rolling. New things will hurt. But that's great because that means that we are getting in there. And you keep breathing. Wow, the back of your hamstring is going to feel so good after this. You are going to see an immediate response. You're going to be able to go further than ever before. Okay, we're tired now. Let's change position. Oh, shake your wrists or not even shake them. If they hurt, just press them. Squeeze them with your opposite hand. Mobilize them. Okay, okay. We're gonna do the whole of one leg before going onto the other leg. 
So now we're gonna do the quads of the left leg. How meticulous are we? This is insane. Okay, the roller is going to go on the top of your left hip and you are going to lie on top of it. You're on a low lunge, so your right, your right foot has stepped forward, like in a low lunge position. And your left leg is extended backwards, but the knee is on the floor. And now we're going to take that roller right to where your quad is, on the front of your thigh. Start just above your knee and start, as you push the floor with both of your hands, both of your hands are also on the floor, so push the floor with both of your hands, push the floor with your right foot and that's also going to give you some height, so you're not going to press on the roller that greatly because you're being held up by your right foot. But you are just very softly rolling on the front of your quad. And maybe you wanna lean to the right and then you're leaning to the outer edge of the right foot, finding different angles, finding those fibers at the top of that knee the closest you go to the knee, you will find places that are extremely tight. Those are places we really want to be targeting because it's affecting our knees. Those bits get really tight and you need to massage them deeply to release pressure from the knee. I don't want to spend an hour around the knee, but it is nice to feel that there's something there. We can even lean a little bit more towards the lift to find those spaces. Now come back forward and roll on the quad. Roll all of the length of the quad and now go back to the side. So as I turn to the right, my right foot comes closer to the knee and I'm finding that outer thigh area that's also very tight. I'm still pushing the floor with the right foot but eventually I want to start levitating, raising that right foot so that I can go deeper and closer to the hip. So at this point, as the roller comes closer to my hip, I am even coming off that right foot completely and just being in a sort of half forearm plank, supporting my body with the elbow, stabilizing with that right hand and freestyling, trying to reach all those points at the front of the quad. All of the muscles are actually quite soft here, so I'm not really doing very much. I can feel them all collapsing around the roller. But I do want to target the hip flexor. Hip flexor ever so tight, ever so weak. Always feels like there's something broken in there. You just gotta massage it. So the hip flexor lives right where the top of the quad meets the hip and 
stay there for a few moments, up and down, slowly, slowly, up and down. Keep pressing the floor with that left forearm so you're in half a sphinx. Make sure that your shoulders are down so you're pressing the floor and growing with your neck up. You're not collapsing on that arm. So let's get out of that left hip. I think we've done everything we should be doing there. Oh my God, I'm still freezing. So let's, let's do the same thing on the other side. So we place our left foot forward, right foot back, right leg extended, low lunge sort of position, palms on the floor, palms pressing the floor and you just place the roller at the top of that right knee this time and you melt on top of it and see how it feels. So there's not a lot of pressure here especially because we are sustaining ourselves upwards with our left foot but still we're relaxing all of these muscles in the front of the knee just upwards of the knee explore that area so get it as close to the knee as possible just above the kneecap lean towards one side and to the other inner knee stay there for a second see what happens see what the body is telling you and to the left side and now ribs in so throughout this move you have your ribs in and your core is working because you're sort of in a modified plant of some sort did i say plant modified plank not plant plant would be a great yoga name for a pose plant pose okay so we're rolling backwards and forwards whenever there's a mirror i just can't i can't take my eyes off it just checking checking my position so you're rolling forward and backwards you're getting closer to the top and then you remember, oh no, I didn't go to the side of the thigh. Let's go to the side of the thigh. So let's twist towards the left until you get to the edge of that left foot. And then the roller is on the side of your thigh. This can be a really emotional place to be. Just saying. Roll on this roller up and down side of the thigh it's very interesting because maybe you don't feel anything at first but then once you melt on it because that's what's happening to me I didn't really feel anything I'm like oh I'm not tight here but now once you you're there for a few moments and the outer muscle lets you in then you find problematic places inside <laughs> beyond that veneer and remember you're pressing the floor with your arms so chest is strong back of the neck is long arms are working 
Oof, this hurts. So that outer thigh is on the roller. Ow. Find a spot that you hate and stay with it back of the neck long. And now if you lean even a little bit more, you will access that real, it's almost towards the back. There's a very, very tight muscle there. Very tight. Not pleasant at all. really don't want to be here. Oh my god, okay. You know, now I'm thinking, did we do that muscle on the other side? Because I don't think we did. This. This is clearly a, a pressure point, so I'm going to stay here for 60 seconds. Next time maybe you can do the work and I can be playing guitar for you. But I do like to do this work. And it's better in company. That's the thing about this kind of stuff. I think distraction does wonders. All right. Oh, I'm out of there. I'm done. <laughs> that was intense. Now, let's... Come forward again, both arms long. Maybe you want to make fists as to release your wrists for a moment. And this is when we start taking that left foot back so that we can roll forward towards the hip flexor. And I like to just really raise the whole left leg up. So actually, you are working your buttocks, see? There's always some work to be found. So you're working your buttocks as you are rolling on that front right hip, hip flexor area. And I'm also going to stay a little bit here, even though maybe it doesn't feel like anything at the beginning. But once you spend a bit of time in there, you will find what you were looking for. So that top of the right hip, hip flexor. And make sure that you're not compressing the left hip. So lengthen that left thigh back. And now if you have the wheel roll into that inner thigh, just really kind of melt on it. This is not really an inner thigh focus, but you, <coughs> you always want to touch on everything. Inner thigh can be really aggravating as well. Let's get on the inner thigh. Stretch. 
straddle your roller with your powerful right thigh. The more powerful your thigh, the more it's going to hurt. And you're just taking the roller to the inner thigh, basically. This is an extremely difficult area to target unless you have a roller. Because you're not going to be able to exert so much force and massage therapists are not either. So just, you are, you're like between your sitting bone and the groin, all of that area. There's also a lot of really powerful lymph nodes in there. Don't really know exactly how they work, but it must be a good thing to move them around. And now the other side. Just sit on it. Sit on it and then move the thigh backward and forward on the roller. I love doing this in public. <sighs> okay, and now, you know what? Because we've been using our arms so much to hold ourselves up. Sit on the top of your feet while I tell you this. So you're sitting on the top of the feet, knees bent underneath you, and then as you elevate the knees, you stretch the top of the feet. I'm just giving you things to do. So I want us to release the arms a little bit and the top of the shoulders, so just like self-massage. Self-massage, the top of the shoulder, trapezius. It should all be quite relaxed. Self-massage with strong hands. So really grab. I don't know if you can see, but I'm really grabbing all of the tissue with the hand. Grabbing the tissue on one side and on the other. While I'm lengthening the top of my feet. Clasp the hands behind your back. Stretch back, stretch back, stretch back. Big stretch. Legs in front of you. And because you've been using the hamstring so much in this sequence, you will feel... Tell me how this feels because I feel completely different. Like my hamstrings can now lengthen so much more and I can press the whole of the leg on the floor. I just feel so supple. Arms up. Grab your left wrist with your right hand. Side bend to the right. Same thing to the other side. Side bend to the left. Separate your legs in a V position in front of you. Left leg bend towards the groin. Side bend to the right. Lengthen, 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 lengthen. Stretch everything. I want us to do a little bit of dynamic stretch now. Left arm straight to the back of the room. Right leg pressing on the floor. Heel pressing on the floor. Glutes engaged. And keep going, side bend to the right. Arms like a ballerina. So you're extending from the back to the fingertips. The shoulders are relaxed. Think of the back and think of the fingertips. And now left leg straight to the left and side bend to the left. Up and down. When you go down, you extend the arms. Extend. Think of extension and expansion. And breathe. Leg is extended, pressing towards the floor. Heel pressing towards the floor. 
The knee is not locked. We've done such good work, such good work. This has been amazing. Right ankle on the top of the left knee. And you're pressing down with that top leg, especially where the knee is, you're pressing down. As you press down, you imagine that your hip bones are going, rotating backwards. So you're, you can even touch it with your hand. So you're making space, rotating it outwards as you press down. So all of the space that we gained everywhere, we're now going to use them, use it to put things where they belong. Change the legs, left ankle on the right knee, press down with the top leg and with your hands go into those hip bones and rotate them outwards, take them out to the side. That's the intention so that you feel that space in there so that it's not compressed. Keep pressing the floor. With the, both of these legs, double pigeon. Switch legs and come forward. So the arms come up and then you start bending forward. Everything is straight. Push down with the legs. And stay as soon as you reach a point where you feel a really big stretch on the back of your hips buttocks area once you feel that stretch stay there you're in a strong position we're strengthening the back muscles here everything is lengthened everything is strong supporting us ribs in and change the crossing of the legs coming to double pigeon on the other side if you don't want to go into double pigeon you can just go into cross legged position arms forward and up palms facing each other you bend forward forward but up looking at the ceiling looking at your hands back of the neck is long and strong press the floor with the legs press down with the legs the shins are parallel to that side of your mat and you stay here and you're strong you're not collapsing down now extend your legs forward bend one leg in take it to the hip and you come forward and now you can I don't want to say collapse but your arms are resting hold the foot with those two arms Press the foot towards the floor. The leg that's extended in front of you is all pressing to the floor. Strong. Now grab the outside edge of that extended foot and twist open. Twisting to the left. Press the hand with the foot and try to grow taller and change legs. So extend your right leg forward, left leg comes in, into the hip, into the groin. Take both hands to that extended leg that's forward. Push the hand with the foot. Shoulders are relaxed. Neck is growing long, back of the neck long. Press the heel on the floor strongly. The leg is heavy, heavy on the floor. Now grab the outside edge of that foot and twist open towards the right. Good. 
extend, extend, extend that right arm to the side of the room. Press the foot towards the hand, heel towards the floor strong. You're growing taller as you twist. And come back. Cross your legs, arms to prayer, bow down. This was an amazing opening sequence. I hope you had the patience to follow it because it's not easy. This is very advanced work because it's slow and it's intense. Tuck the toes in behind you, just stretching the back of those feet. We have worked all of our body in a very unconventional way. We have lengthened it, we have made space, but we have also really worked every part of our body. Now let's fold forward. So both feet together and fold forward. Just one little inversion. Stay here for a few moments. Press the floor with the feet. Bring your weight towards your toes, towards the front of your feet. Hands can be on the floor or they can be holding opposite elbows. With the feet, drag the mat towards the sides. So trying to drag the mat out. Bend your legs and come up. Arms up, reach towards the ceiling. Hands to prayer. And we're done.